Tony here. Today I'm going to show you a mod that allows you to walk through some of the levels in the 1998 classic Unreal on your Oculus Quest in full virtual reality. Now, just want to make it clear, this isn't a game, so you won't be able to shoot monsters or pick up items. It just allows you to explore the environments in Unreal in full virtual reality on your Quest. Now, if you do like this video, check out my channel. I have a lot of similar content on there that I think you'll enjoy. Hit that subscribe button and notification bell to be kept up to date with the latest and support me in creating more content like this in the future. Now, if you never played the original Unreal back in 1998, you might look at the graphics that I'm gonna show you and think, oh, well, this is nothing special. But what you gotta understand, back in 1998, these graphics were amazing. They just blew people's minds. So this mod allows three different experiences and they're all created in the Unreal 4 engine. So let's start by looking at the Unreal menu screen. So when I hear this title screen music, it brings back so many memories for me, uh, and it's just an awesome soundtrack. Unreal has a brilliant soundtrack. Now what you can't see is that I'm controlling my experience using the left and right triggers to go up and down, and the thumbstick to move around. I guess that is wishful thinking, but I was just hoping that there might be a few rooms to explore or Easter eggs to find inside this castle. But of course, this is the intro screen and in the intro screen, you never actually got to enter these doors here. Now I'll go around the back. Um, what you'll notice, there's a lot of reflections and shiny tiles. And I remember the original being very similar. And so what I'll do is after this, I'll play clips from the original so we can do a little comparison. Ah, uh, that's cool. I wasn't expecting that. I thought it'd be similar to the castle, but looks like there's a little interconnecting uh, cavern system along the far side. So we come out just at the top so there's two openings there on the side. Okay, let's have a look at the original title screen, just see how it compares. <laughs> the reflection on those tiles, it's insane. But I remember back in the day being quite impressed by that. Ah, uh, this guy doesn't appear in the remake version. Now we'll be able to see a glimpse of the caves that we saw in the remake version. Overall, they're quite similar. I think there are things missing like lightning and things, but pretty spot on. Now let's have a look at the opening scene of this game in VR. Ah, oh, this is so good to be able to go through this in VR. It's such a nostalgia trip for me. Now, one thing I have noticed is that you start off with two auto mags. In the actual game, you start off with no weapons, so there's a difference there. And I've really noticed a few differences, which I'll point out when I compare it to the uh, original game. The lighting is great, really sets up a moody atmosphere, and the sounds of your screaming shipmates as they're attacked by all kinds of aliens really gives it an awesome atmosphere, just like the original uh, did have. And it's great to see that the lifts work as well. So let's compare it to the original game. So I would say the remake definitely has better lighting, probably owing to the Unreal 4 engine that it uses. And this is a bit different, this guy in the glass. Uh, you couldn't do that on the remake version. Now, of course, in the original, you can pick up items like the Universal Translator, which I just picked up. In the remake, you can't pick up items, but the Universal Translator was there on the floor in the remake. Uh, if you missed it, just go back, have a look, 
It was there, you just couldn't pick it up. Prisoner 472 escaping. Prisoner 327 escaping. Playing this game again is just bringing back to me how groundbreaking this game was back in 1998. I know when you look at first person shooters now, it's not uncommon to have backstories. But back then, having such environmental storytelling like you see here with the lighting and the explosions and waking up in an unknown ship as prisoner 849 surrounded just by chaos and having to find out what's going on that sort of stuff was pretty rare back then so this was pretty mind-blowing at the time and it's still quite fun to go back today and play through okay let's take a look at the VR remake now there's no explosions like we saw in the original game although that chunk of ledge does fall off which is something but it'd be nice to see one day those explosions added for that atmosphere now what i found out as well you can also use the guns to sort of cheat and jump up onto ledges so i'm going to be doing that as a shortcut now in this remake i've called this orange yellow glow around me by pressing a button like a flashlight if you like i remember in the original you needed to use a flashlight or a flare i think to light up the environment and there's a difference here the original there's a great covering that but on this version you can go down there and that actually leads to that room we saw at the start of the game with the guy sitting in the chair that you could zap with lightning in the original version okay now we move on to the final part and this is my favorite part this is where you leave the ship and enter the alien world now i remember back in the day experiencing this headphones on the music it just blew my mind Now, out of all the memories of Unreal, this is the memory that stuck with me the most, entering the planet of Nepali for the first time. And I've got to say, even though it doesn't fill me with the awe that it did back when I first experienced it, back in 1998, it's still an amazing experience, particularly in VR. So let's compare this to the original. Now already you notice some differences like the weird bunny creature we just saw that's in the original isn't in the remake and there's a few items and things that are missing. Also the auto mag doesn't have the secondary fire mode in the remake, at least I couldn't find a way to activate secondary fire so I don't think that exists. But for the most part it's quite a faithful reproduction of this section. Okay, now we're going to head into this bunker. You know, this game at one point was going to see an N64 and PlayStation release, but just never ended up happening, which I think is a real shame. Okay, we have one of the first enemies you come across in the game. This is a brute. 
obviously we can't seem to hurt him he doesn't seem to react he seems to be just like a, a static model great to see though in vr hopefully one day they get these fully animated now let's check the original to see how it compares Now, of course, we see some of the biggest differences here. We don't see the same animations playing out, nor do we see the enemies attacking us. And playing this just makes me want a fully functioning version of this game in VR even more. Okay, I think I'll pretty much leave it there. I'll show some more footage as I wrap up uh, this video. But if you are a fan of the Unreal 1998 version, uh, if you did play it back then, or if you're playing it now, uh, and you just love the game, then definitely download and try this out. Now if I haven't made it clear already how groundbreaking this game was back in the day, um, this was developed using the Unreal Engine, its own engine, an engine that you probably know is dominating the game industry to this day. So I guess the spirit of this game still continues to this day through the use of that game engine. Now there's more to this experience than what I've just explored here. I've kept it quite short, tried to compare some of what I thought were the main points. Um, but definitely when you give this a go, there is more to explore and probably other things to uncover. Now I'll show you how to install it. Very quick and simple. You can play it untethered on your quest like you saw me doing. So you visit this website here. I'll leave a link in the description below. Just uh, go to files and download the latest one for the Oculus Quest. Once it's downloaded, you need to unzip the contents and it will look like this once it's unzipped. Then I will use SideQuest here to install the APK file. So just do what I'm doing, drag and drop the APK file into this logo here and it will install it. Then with your Quest still connected to your PC, access it through the file explorer, go to internal storage. Then you click on Android, then find the OBB folder and I'll find the Unreal folder, which can take a bit of time if you've got a lot of stuff there, but that's what it should look like. Then I want to copy the OBB file from that unzip file into that folder. So this file here. Now, just a few tips. If you're on a Mac, I don't think you're able to just copy and paste that OBB file over. I'll leave a link in the description below if you're having trouble as it might help you copy and paste that file if you're using a Mac. Also, I found it took a while for that Unreal folder to appear on the internal storage for my quest. I had to restart the quest a few times and wait a while and it just popped up eventually. Uh, I'm not sure why that is, but if you can't find it, just turn the quest on and off a couple of times, wait a while, and it'll probably appear for you like it did for me. Anyway, that's it for me for now. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Do remember to like and subscribe, and I'll catch you next time.